If you're heading south, really south, you might find yourself near Stiles, Iowa. This early Iowa town was located in Davis County, but it's barely located in Iowa at all. Its location is actually closer to the Missouri-Iowa border than any neighboring town currently in existence. It was platted around 1840 and believed to be named after Colonel Stiles S. Carpenter, a Davis County clerk and the first prosecuting attorney who served until 1857. The history of Davis County lays out in detail the workings of the town and the people who lived there. Around the turn of the 20th century, the village boasted a population of 100 with two churches, a school, three stores, a blacksmith, a sawmill, a grist mill, and two doctors. There are a few buildings that still remain that hint at what was once a thriving town. Perhaps the most iconic building in town, and one of the only left standing today, is the general store and post office. This building stood at the corner of Thomas Foster Collins's property. One of the first members of the community, Collins was a busy man, serving not only as the first owner of the general store, but also postmaster at Stiles beginning in 1851. In 1891, the store had new ownership and was operated by J.H. Collins. Near the crossroads of Peach Avenue and 233rd Street, an old school building which stands today is forgotten by time. The school was originally located where the current Stiles Cemetery is located. In 1870, it moved to where it is today. In 1881, the school boasted 45 enrolled students with 24 pupils in regular attendance. The school building was also used as a civic center for the community meetings and gatherings. One of the town's doctors, Dr. James Dunlavy, was educated at this school. After getting his medical degree in Keokuk, he returned to Stiles to practice. Sadly, in 1903, tragedy struck. The Stiles store burned down after a devastating fire claimed the building which was owned at the time by J.H. Collins. Across Peach Avenue was another store owned by Charles Miller, which also burnt down. Nearly $10,000 worth of damages occurred in the town due to the fire. Eventually, the store was rebuilt but closed in 1943 under the management of L.B. Daniel, a local farmer, after 91 years of service to the community. Today, what remains of the post office and store belongs to the Lister family, whose predecessors settled in the area in 1852. Lister at one time owned 960 acres. 80 of those acres that were closest to Stiles were later divided amongst his sons. Down the road from the historic buildings, the original settlers, including Thomas Foster Collins, rest in the Stiles Cemetery. Just a short drive from Cedar Rapids in Delaware County, situated in between Worthington and Dyersville on Highway 136, lives the remains of the once bustling town of Rockville, Iowa.
On the bank of the Maquoketa River sits all that remains of a crumbling mill, one of the few reminders of Rockville and all that could have been. Rockville was founded in 1845 by Oliver A. Olmsted when he built the mill. From there, the town began its boom, adding a post office in 1846. Being on the stagecoach route contributed greatly to Rockville's explosive growth, but like many towns during this time, its true fate was tied to the railroad. Rockville was impressive. Saloons, mills, smiths, schools, and churches were all built in short order and drew many people to the town. According to an article from the Dubuque Telegraph in 1952, Rockville was known for leisure activities on the water near the mill, such as boating and fishing. Rockville wasn't without its hardships. Being on the river meant flooding, and one such flood knocked out the dam and portions of the mill. However, the true killing blow for the town was their rival for the railroad, Dyersville. Dyersville was just a few miles away and a fierce competitor, but Rockville had an early start. Despite a few near disasters, Dyersville was able to grow bigger and better than Rockville, and ultimately, the railroad chose them. It was a swift fall. Just two short decades after it was founded, Rockville shuttered its doors and all but disappeared. Today, you can barely see the collapsing old mill crumbling by the side of the river. The only other marker of Rockville is the cemetery, the resting place of veterans from both the Civil and Mexican Wars. Located in northeast Iowa, what's left of Buckhorn sits off a busy road. There's not much left of this place, just a few buildings and crumbling stones. The town was a unique one. Its story is linked to Buckhorn Creamery and Velma Scott Teeple. In 1899, roughly 20 farmers in the area came together to form a cooperative. Velma's father, Hans Scott, was a co-founder of the Farmers Union Cooperative Creamery and Buckhorn. As we'll soon see, Velma's life was tied to the town. Buckhorn Creamery became a large operation in the area. According to an article written by Kelly Gerlach, at its height, Buckhorn Creamery had 700 patrons supplying milk, 
and 11 mail callers covering 17 routes. Suppliers came from Jackson, Jones, Dubuque, Cedar, and Clinton counties. In an article published in 1954, the Jackson Sentinel reported that the creamery had produced 35 million pounds of butter since its founding. Buckhorn was enjoying a boom. People had happily settled in the area, including Velma's family. Sadly, this prosperous era couldn't continue forever. As large companies formed, Buckhorn Creamery's decline started. Butter stopped making a profit, and the creamery looked to cheese as the answer. But cheese making was not a long-term solution, Gerlach writes. Buckhorn's board of directors merged with Mississippi Valley producers in 1962. Everything was sold at auction the next year. Velma researched the histories of her farm community and decided to write about Buckhorn. Her book, Buckhorn, a memoir, was published in 2001 and is one of the only records of daily life in Buckhorn. Without these short 70 pages about Velma's life, much of Buckhorn's history would be lost. Thankfully, Velma was able to preserve the memory of Buckhorn for generations to come. Today, all that remains of the once thriving community of Buckhorn is the dilapidated creamery, the town church, and the cemetery on the hill. A new life may be in store for the town, however, as it was recently purchased. Kelly Gerlach's article details the purchase and the history of the town beautifully.